welcome to grade 7 today we will discuss about a beautiful poem butter which is written by sara tessadel before we enter into the poem i would like to give a brief idea about the poet this is one of her great pick sara tessadel now her biography she was born on august 8 1884 in the st louis youngest of four children was always spoiled and veiled on like a princess always very frail and caught diseases easily grew up around adults and often struggled to entertain herself her first poem was ready's mirror which was published in the local newspaper she married ernst filsinger in 1914 but divorced in 1929 In 1933 she caught chronic pneumonia which weakened her body mind and soul. She committed suicide on January 29, 1933 in New York at the age of 48. Now I would like to give a brief idea about the theme of the poem. Butter by Sara Tessadel describes the many lovely and splendid sights, sounds and experiences life has to sell to someone willing to invest in them. The poem begins with the speaker describing her first batch of life's experiences. She speaks of waves, fire and faces of children. Butter is a three stanza poem that is separated into sets of six lines. Each of these sets follow the rhyming pattern of A B C B D D altering as the poet saw from stanza to stanza Now I will discuss about each stanza one by one This is the first stanza before I enter into the summary part of the stanza I would like to give a repetition of this stanza Life has loveliness to sell all beautiful and splendid things blue waves whitened on a cliff soaring fire that so sways and sings and children's faces looking up holding wonder like a cup now the summary of the stanza in the first stanza of this piece the poet utilizes a line that will be repeated with some alterations in each of the following stanza Tessadel speaker states that life is so full of wonderful things that it has loveliness to sell it is overflowing with all manners of beautiful and splendid things these things she speaks of are not objects as one might assume they are experiences sights sounds and feelings these experiences are the true stock life has to offer and what one should strive to acquire the next line speaks on the variety of different things that life has to sell the three elements she mentions in the first stanza are quite different from one another the first first there are the blue waves which are turned white as they crash against a cliff then the soaring fire that moves through the air sways and sings while in some cases a fire is something to be feared she is presenting it is it as another beautiful aspect of life one should appreciate she she speaks about the children who are ready to face the world with so many hopes wishes like a golden cup now I would like to give explanation of the second stanza. Before I re- before I explain the stanza, I would like to read the stanza. Life has loveliness to sell, music like a curve of gold, scent of pine trees in the rain, eyes that love you, arms that hold, and for your spirits still delight, holy thoughts that start the night. In the second stanza the speaker repeats the initial opening line life has loveliness to sell she goes on to describe a number of other aspects of existence one should look for these elements are 
are not at all exclusionary. Any person could find these moments and add them to their life. First, there is music. It is described as being like a curve of gold. It allows a reader to imagine it as something to be had and kept within one's life. It shines like a gold and as a similar value. There is also the scent of pine trees, particularly when it is raining. This is very particular moment, but one many readers could relate to. These images, depending on who is reading this piece, might stimulate one to recall. The second half of the poem moves to a more emotional personal experiences. Life can give you eyes that love you, arms that hold. One is able to acquire these moments for their own hearts and minds. Just like the water and the fire, love is another element. Life has loveliness to sell. Having addressed one's emotional needs, the speaker turns to the spiritual. She does not define what kind of spirituality life has to sell. This way the lines are not attached to a particular religion or a set of beliefs. What she does do is to describe an improvement of the spirit. This can happen when holy thoughts enter one's mind. One should be delighted and thrilled by them. So this is a brief idea about the second stanza. <clears throat> now I would like to explain the third stanza. So first of all I will read the stanza. Spend all you have for loveliness. Buy it and never count the cost. For one white singing hour of peace. Count many a year of strife well lost. And for a breath of ecstasy, give all you have been or could be. Now the explanation part of the third stanza. In the final stanza, the opening line is slightly altered. She asks that her readers or listeners spend all the time they had pursuing loveliness. It is not something one should be fricked about. about. There should be no Hesitations in one's heart that they should buy it. Once bought, one should also never count the cost. These, there is no cost that is too high. The last line dis displays the appreciation the speaker has for the elements of life she has mentioned previously. She sees life as having no purpose other than the collect these sights, smell and sound as they have great power. One moment of true happiness can erase many a year of strife. The loveliness of life removes the strife of the everyday. The entire poem is summarized into the last two lines in which she asks that her readers give all you have been or could be to experience one's breath of ecstasy. One should not hold back from something that could make bring happiness. Beauty, loveliness and splendid things are the purpose of life. So this is a brief explanation of the third stanza. So, here the poet has used so many literary devices. So, now we will discuss each and every literary device what the poet has used in the poem. First one is alliteration. So, life has loveliness to sell in the first line. Soaring fire that sways and sings. Line 4. Spirit still delight. Line 11. Count the cost. Line 14. These are the lines where the poet has used alliteration. Now simile. Holding wonder like a cup. Line 6. Music like a curve of gold. Line 8. These are the two lines where poet she has used simile. Personification. Soaring fire that sways and sing. Line 4. Repetition. That this same line has repeated in the first first line and the seventh line. Life has loveliness to sell in the first line. Again, the same line is repeated in line seven. Life has loveliness to sell. So, with this, I'll conclude my today's topic.
about the poem so thank you